Okay, I hope you can hear me over the water behind me. I'll probably end up switching and moving, but it's kind of my, well, it's already been in my attention, but it seems to me that a lot of people kind of get upset when you mention that there's martial arts cults and that many martial arts can be considered cults by the way they react. Uh, whenever you mention commercialism, whatever, people tend to get a little irritated because they don't want you to know that they're doing everything in their power to take money from you. Well, let's examine this somewhere else. So here's the thing. Most martial arts fall under that idea of a cult mentality. Now, when I say this, a lot of people are probably going to be sitting there saying, no, 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 my martial arts not a cult. Well, let's examine something here. Every martial art has their golden cow their um, divine originator, who cannot be questioned. Now what happens is when you question this person, you are considered a heretic and wrong and a fraud. Now there's all these nice little names people throw out at you, but the reality is this. What defines a martial art? If a martial art is a set of punching and kicking and grappling techniques, then what really differentiates one martial art, one collection of kicking, punching, and grappling techniques from another? To give you an idea here, let me explain. You see, judo, the rules for judo and competition do not allow for striking techniques. Therefore, the striking techniques of judo are oftentimes considered self-defense. Same with karate. In karate competitions, they don't allow grappling. However, the grappling techniques of karate are often referred to as self-defense. So then, what exactly defines a martial art? More specifically, what defines my martial art? Well, let me give you an example here. When I looked at martial arts, I realized they were all the same. In essence, they are all the same. They're a collection of techniques, which exclude some techniques, but maintain them as self-defense techniques, while at the same time, playing to a sport rules application. Now, here's the problem. You cannot be a traditional martial artist and be against sport application if your martial art has a list of basic techniques and then a base of self-defense techniques. What's the purpose? What's the purpose of saying that karate has grappling if the only way you learn them is they are self-defense techniques? What's the purpose of saying that judo has striking if the only way you learn them, you learn them through self-defense techniques? And I'm sure a lot of people are like, but, but Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. What about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu applies ground grappling techniques as the base and doesn't include throws, takedowns, or striking techniques except as self-defense or higher levels of training. Now that being said, when you look at all martial arts, all martial arts have that technical base, the, the physical technique. <coughs> In my case, I looked at that, I seen that. I trained with a guy who had uh, experience in Krav Maga in the army. I trained with guys who had training in Muay Thai, uh, Karate, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, uh, and we all had the basic uh, modern army combatives, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu training. Some guys actually held belts, uh, purple belts, brown belts, and even black belts in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that I trained with. Now, that being said, you have to bear in mind that all these martial arts taught technique and where I wanted to differentiate uh, and where I seen the difference was where I looked at ninjutsu. Ninjutsu included survival training. Ninjutsu included weapons. Yes, some martial arts do include weapons. Uh, the application of martial arts and weapons and survival training and tactics and strategy and mental development and philosophy uh, and the philosophy of which often leads to the psychological aspects of manipulation and control of other people without actually fighting, the whole fighting without fighting concept that you often hear about in martial arts but very rarely ever see, uh, which has become a catchphrase for uh, my martial arts sucks. All these things were present in ninjutsu. When I tried to apply them from ninjutsu to jujitsu, I ran into some issues, so I decided to go with the modern aspects of how uh, the, psycho the psychology plays itself out. 
And for that, I developed what most people are familiar with, with the street-focused jiu-jitsu concept. Uh, it is the only martial art that I'm aware of, which mandatorily requires you to understand mental, philosophical training, uh, psychological training, I guess you could say, uh, manipulation, if you want to, on that same little note there. Uh, the idea is to understand how to prepare yourself to fight another person without actually engaging in physical conflict, the whole fighting without. What happens here is that you understand that there's a concept behind what you're doing, a human reaction concept of dealing with people without actually having to kick the living shit out of them. And just in case you have to kick the living shit out of them, the basic techniques involve striking, uh, close quarter striking, throws, takedowns, and a little bit of ground fighting techniques. The idea here isn't to make you the next MMA champion or the next person to take on the Gracies. The idea here is to give you a blend of a little bit of every aspect. To give you a conscious awareness of all of the three basic ranges of fighting. Uh, four if you want to take the psychological as a range of fighting uh, done internally in your mind. Uh, then later on you eventually learn weapons. So there's five ranges to this entire system and it's very similar to the five ranges taught in. Now bear in mind, a lot of these changes, modernizations, and stuff that I did, I could not have done if I gave in to the uh, bow down before your golden calf, uh, divine master so and so is always right type of mentality. The When you look at martial arts, and where I've mentioned they're all a collection of punching and kicking and striking techniques, what happens is that one person who's successful at fighting using that certain method, uh, you develop this cult of personality, this following based on what he did, this way of trying to imitate him. And what was successful for him might not be successful for other people. What works for me might not be successful for everyone else out there. And if you look at it and you say that the martial art that you were learning is a base, uh, it's a stepping stone for going out and, and growing and finding your own way, and developing your own uh, your own path, your own your own martial art, if you will. Uh, you can't do that if you give in to these ideas of uh, you know the 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 sole creator of the system being always right and infallible or anything else. And you start seeing this type of cult mentality in martial arts, where one person who's successful, who created a style, uh, suddenly gets hero status. And then any questioning of him results in uh, this view that you know anyone who questions him is a fraud or or a heretic or, or wrong because uh, divine master so and so or, or this master or whoever cannot be wrong. And that if you question him or if you say that there's something wrong with what he did, then there's something wrong with you because this person was perfect. And they basically go from being uh, a great man whom another person wants to emulate, to being an almost uh, mythical figure, to being uh, a, a hero worship, to eventually over time, you know, uh, being played out as this messiah type character who could do no wrong. You have to avoid that cult-like following of a particular style or a particular method or a particular practicer. This is where you hear all the claims of legitimacy coming from because it's one religious following of a martial art or a certain uh, instructor or master or whatever against another. And it's it's two little religions basically trying to fight out or, or one uh, religion trying to proclaim itself the dominant one and uh, this is where you see all the politics of martial arts it's the different little uh, churches different little religions of martial art if you will uh, competing and fighting against each other 